Wizards announced Universes Beyond, a way of crossing over other IPs with the MTG game. And they also announced that Hasbro is going to be ushering Wizards further under the umbrella as a division of Hasbro. Yeah, it's like Hasbro is going to be three branches of this government, right? And Wizards of the Coast is going to be one of them. Wizards of the Coast is going to be its own third that focuses on magic the gathering dungeons and dragons we've got so much to talk about today and the video starts right now special thanks to our patreon supporters who power our channel check out our patreon for monthly giveaways exclusive content and even a starring role in our fan fight series link in the description below hello and welcome to the day thank you for spending your time with us i'm jake I'm Joel. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel are Magic. We are going to discuss the reserve list. Oh my goodness. And how it could possibly be reprinted under our universes beyond and our new organizational holdings of Hasbro and Wizards. But before we do, if you would consider hitting that like button, if you like the video by the end of it and hit that dislike button, if you don't, it really helps us out. It's the best way to support the channel. If you are a fan of Jake and Joel, go ahead and head on over to Patreon. That's a great way to support as well. We're talking about a new reorganization today that is just honestly groundbreaking for Wizards of the Coast. So I wanna start off with the definition of reserved cards. Reserved cards will never be printed again in a functionally identical form. A card is considered functionally identical to another card if it has the same card type, subtypes, abilities, mana cost, power, and toughness. No cards will be added to the reserve list in the future. That is from Wizards official website. That is their definition of reserved cards and their rule guidance that they provided for what can and cannot be reprinted. When the announcement came through that Hasbro was going to be ushering wizards under their umbrella, it was accompanied with the announcement of Universes Beyond, and that distracted most people. Jake and I, we, we really got focused on the fact though that Hasbro is bringing wizards further into the fold. Now, I wanna start off by saying that this could be nothing. This could mean absolutely nothing, nothing could change. This is just sure. some corporate mumbo jumbo. I don't think it's out of the realm of imagination for them to point to the sale of a Black Lotus for sure. half a million dollars a few weeks ago and say, all right, how do we do that again? How do we get that card? That card's gonna sell money. Can we do Black Lotus secret layer for, you know, a thousand dollars or something ridiculous? Is that possible? Can we do that? So what I did was I made some custom cards. I wanted to ask ourselves the question, how would we do it? We've got Hasbro looking over our shoulder. We are Mark Rosewater making Magic the Gathering with his teams. And we've been told, you've got to reprint Black Lotus. You've got to reprint Tabernacle at Pendrel Vale. So I want to jump over to some custom cards and I want you to be paying attention to them as we go through them. Let us know in the comments how you would design these cards. If the designs that we've come up with skirt the rules enough to make this happen. Let's look at some custom stuff. So first up here, we have got my version of Tabernacle at Pendrel Vale. I want to start by saying I don't think this card would fit the rule. This said, a card is considered functionally identical to another card if it has the same card type, subtypes, abilities, mana cost, power, and toughness. And this is exactly a reprint of Tabernacle at Pendrel Vale, except with new art and a new title. If it were only in Commander, and they did it like the way that they did Battle Bond, we're going to show some stuff here that's going to remind you a little bit of the battle bond lands but i think that that really is the uh that's the secret sauce here is that they only exist in commander and i mean whether or not the name needs to be changed under this new uh division that wizards of the coast is going to be is yet to yet to be seen i mean we could just see a straight up reprint of tabernacle at pendra vale like you were just talking about a black lotus secret layer i do think that's a a a potential but yeah i think this is more likely so this is really the beginning right this is as close to it as you could get it's pretty much it you'll also notice that as we go through these i've scanned them all 40k warhammer 40k or lord of the rings because we already know that those are going to exist um so i think that we have to go a step further than uh, my version of imperial palace here and go with something like a bad and you'll recognize this card as juzum Jin, except i've changed the subtype for from Jin to Warrior.
warrior commander. It's exactly Juzum Jin outside of that. This is a character from the Warhammer 40k universe and a way, if I'm reading this rule correctly, that we could get a reprint of a very expensive reserve list card. A card that honestly, at the surface level, if I saw this in a commander precon, I would not like this card. It's not if that I were good. a new player. <laughs> If I were a new player, I'd be like, yeah, we'll probably cut the 5-5 five, five for 4 <laughs> that deals damage to you. We talk a lot about scarcity over here because that drives the price of so many of these cards. You know, we don't really have to break down how scarcity works, but think about like gold and silver. Jism Jin, or however you pronounce the name, if you were to reprint that card straight up, if there were no reserve list, it's a bulk rare. This is as much as you would have to do if you are reading this reserve list definition from Watsi's website and just taking it at its most surface level value, not counting in any of the equity that you've got with the player base or the collector base. And you're just like, I don't care who it pisses off. I don't care what we're doing. We are reprinting these according to the reserve list rules that we have laid out. That's this, it. this is another version of that. So if you recognize this card, this is underground C, except it's Helm's Deep because Lord of the Rings. All we've done here was change the card type from land to legendary land. That's it. Past that, we've changed the name, which is not in the reserve list definition, the art, which is not in the reserve list definition, the subtype is still Island Swamp, and the ability is still exactly the same. Jake, do you think that this would be a way is. that we that could get a reprint enough. going? Because, you think this because is enough? even legacy players, like they might play one or two of these. Okay, like think about th theoretically, you know, this is going to be legal and legacy correct these universes beyond sets. theoretically yeah underground c is obviously going to be the best and first choice always right. so unless this is explicitly an underground c i could see it being an addition to but it will never be uh a four of that legendary subtype is gonna stop people from wanting to play it but in commander great bring it on oh yeah I like the point you made about legacy playable because that really is like that next step, right? I know a lot of commander players that also play legacy. And sure. when that universe is beyond thing was announced, that was the next question was, okay, not legal in standard. Got it. Is it going to be legacy playable? So let's take this a step further and design a card like Baradur here. You'll recognize it as the Tower of Sauron from Lord of the Rings. This is a Badlands. It's a Swamp Mountain. It yep. taps for black or red. We left that legendary subtype on there just to drive the point further home. But I added an ability, Glory of Battle. When this permanent enters a battlefield, sacrifice it unless a commander started the game in your command zone. So I think that answers the is this legacy playable question real freaking fast yeah for sure it would just uh, come into play if you needed a way to sacrifice a land if for some reason you needed some effect <laughs> that just like when a land enters it gets sacrificed oh my god then yeah i accidentally <laughs> broke the format play it. i broke the freaking format everybody sorry lands legacy lands with baradors is now a thing i kicked this idea to our discord and i said what do y'all think how, how do we do this and our buddy chicken richard in our discord said they've previously discussed using legendary like we did here with barador or like we did with Helm's Deep and Snow variants of the duels. The issue is that functionally they are the same in dynamic power level. There has to be a drawback of any kind for them to be present for a reprint. They can either make them worse or they can make them stronger, but not similar, it's weird. And that was his take. And I liked that idea of how do we make a card that is so good stronger? And so I said, all right, let's look at Black Lotus. Here is the one ring, zero cost, legendary artifact. So we're already there on, on uh, the super type. Tap it, sacrifice the one ring, add three mana in any combination of colors to your mana pool. So the card is already better and spend this mana only if a commander started the game in your command zone. We've got that glory of battle, we're gonna call my design idea present on this as a functional but better Black Lotus reprint. Well, I've already skipped past the fact that I don't think it will ever happen, and I'm living in this world where this <laughs> card becomes best in slot in CEDH, and now one of the best and most played cards ever is the ring from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, dude, like the salt. So now we kick it to you. We've asked a couple of questions in this video, but it really boils down to two. Is Hasbro bringing Watsi into their fold further and making them a division going to give them any more power than they already have to say reprint this? And if Watsi's hand is forced, how are they going to do that without completely disenfranchising their entire player base and maybe just pissing some people off? You have to keep in mind the collector in this game because a lot of the game has clout because a lot of these cards have a lot of value. If the game tanks, if it becomes a Yu-Gi-Oh, you're gonna have a lot less people that are interested in it and that are gonna want to park their money in other assets. Let us know what you think down in the comments below. Other than that, hit that like button if you liked the video, hit that dislike button if you don't, and we'll catch you later.